What are you doing? <laughs> ah, it's always my favorite part of these videos is jumping. What is up my guys, my gals, and my non-binary pals? Today, I am going to be reviewing Ghost Rider, which is located at Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. It's kind of in the metropolitan area of um, Los Angeles, California, um, so kind of southern-ish California. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's, let's get into this. I am kind of going to structure this just a tiny bit differently um, than I structured uh, the other, the last one, even though I bet went on a big explanation, I might do that again. Um, actually, it's pretty short. So, basically, instead of going through sections, I'm going to just kind of take you guys through the whole experience, um, from when you get into the park, to walking to, um, uh, Ghost Rider, to in the queue line of Ghost Rider, to on Ghost Rider, and then after, I'll still do the pros and cons, and I'll still rank it um, a couple different ways. Anyways, let's get right into it. So first, you walk into um, Knott's Berry Farm. It's an insanely beautiful park um, with a super pretty entranceway. Anyways, you will walk in and immediately, not turn, but kind of veer off to the left. This will get you into your little old western area. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it's called. I think it's like Ghost Town, but that might just be a not scary farm event. You know, it's it's called something. Um, but you're going to veer off to the left, um, and that will take you into the old western area. And then you take a sharp um, turn to the left, uh, where you will find Ghost Rider um, in its entranceway. Uh, the entranceway for Ghost Rider, I wouldn't say is the most insanely themed or anything along those lines. Um, it's, I mean, it's a okay entranceway. Uh, it's kind of like a cave type of thing, um, where you're kind of walking into a mine, um, and it has Ghost Rider kind of, um, I guess, quote, carved into the rock. Um, it's okay, it's not anything crazy or anything along those lines, um, but it's, it's there, so you walk down through there, um, and really the queue line experience I can't talk about too, too much, just because I did have a flash pass when I went, um, or sorry, as they call it at, um, in Cedar Fair, Fair Park, I think it's fast... Fast lane, that's right. I had a fast lane uh, pass. Um, so I was able to skip all the lines, which I 100% recommend um, because pretty much all of the roller coasters at Knott's Berry Farm um, do get insanely long lines just because uh, of where it's located. Again, it's, it's in um, just outside of LA, so it gets constant visitors. Um, and it's not like the most insanely enormous park or anything like that. Uh, so each attraction definitely does get long lines. So I recommend, um, a fast lane pass. Uh, but anyways, you, from my understanding, you walk, um, through the queue, kind of pass, um, the little start of the ride. Um, and then you go into, um, a little barn type of thing, which is the end, or sorry, the station building. Uh, and there you'll come across a whole bunch of switchbacks. Um, they, there are so, so many switchbacks. Um, and that's both downstairs and upstairs. Um, you walk in and you, I think you go through two rooms of switchbacks from what I recall. Um, and then you go up, um, onto the second floor, which is where the coaster is, and you go through even more switchbacks. Um, of course, I only have footage of the upstairs room, because, again, I did have a fast lane um, pass, um, but it, it was very crowded. Uh, I think the line for Ghost Rider um, was about 45 minutes to an hour, um, and when talking to some uh, coaster enthusiasts um, that had knots as their home park, um, they said that it was actually a light day that day, um, and that knots was relatively not crowded um, for from what they see normally, which is kind of insane to me, but 
um, that's, that's that. Um, so, uh, anyways, you're going to walk up, you know, go through a whole bunch of switchbacks, um, all throughout, there's pretty much no theming, um, from what I saw, at least. Um, no, like, prominent theming, at least. Um, and then you get to the ride. Um, the ride vehicle is pretty much a normal GCI, um, ride vehicle. It's nothing too insane. Um, there is kind of a front to it that says Ghost Rider, and it has a, um, little block on the front. It's either gold or it's silver, um, and that marks what train you get. It's either the silver train or the gold train. Um, I didn't really find any difference, like major difference in the trains, um, but I'm not really that type of enthusiast where I'm like, oh, I got this train and, you know, I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, so there might be a difference, but no nothing that was very noticeable to me. Um, but anyways, you board your train um, and you pull down your lap bar, which is a normal GCI lap bar. Um, the only problem really I have with the lap bar is just that it does come down more throughout the ride. It's definitely a very heavy lap bar. Um, so even when you're pulling it down, uh, you it will, like, when you let go of it, it will drop. Um, which kind of sucks, but it's not, like, the end of the world. Because um, it does use, like, a little clicking system, which means um, that maybe you are right here and the click isn't until here so and like the other click is until here so you have this much room um but you could get unlucky and have a click like right where you are um but it, it kind of depends on the rider of course as most restraints and most i guess cars um on roller coasters do but i found them to be pretty comfortable overall. I didn't really have any problem with the restraints other than the fact that you don't really get as much airtime as I would have liked to, um, just because of, again, um, how the restraints are kind of heavy and they go down throughout the ride. Um, but anyways, speaking of the ride, let's get into the POV. So, as we get into the POV, I just want to say that this is my POV. I will uh, leave the original POV right up in the corner right here, so you can check out the full POV without me, like, slowing things down, replaying things, all of that kind of stuff, so definitely go check that out up in the corner. Um, but anyways, let's get into the point of view video um, and me explaining why I like some elements and why I don't. So, you are going to pull out of the station um, and go into sort of a pre-element. This just turns you around uh, to get you into the chain lift of the uh, coaster, which will take you 118 feet up. Um, and yeah, go on up into the chain lift. Um, it's a pretty moderately speed chain lift, nothing like too crazy with it. Um, it does give you some okay views of hang time, um, and overall of the rest of the park, although it is angled away from the rest of the park, so you kind of do have to turn around. Um, but it's cool at night to see hang time with its amazing light package. Um, anyways, you go on up and eventually crest the top of the lift hill, um, and you go down the 108 foot drop. Now, um, really quickly, this drop m isn't the best drop ever. It gives you some, hang uh, or sorry, air time in the back, um, but it's definitely not the steepest. It is a 51 degree drop, so it's not anything too spectacular. Um, from there, you go into a turn and then up into an insanely awesome airtime hill. Uh, you level out on on kind of ground level, I guess, um, and go into a turnaround, which then takes you uh, back down um, in another awesome airtime moment. Uh, there's a little turn, which uh, takes you up into what used to be, um, here we are, uh, what used to be the uh, mid-course brake run, uh, but they removed it when GCI came in and retract um, Ghost Rider. But anyways, this right here is for sure the best airtime moments on the ride, um, especially on the back row, just because you do have a lot of speed going into it, so it does really, like, yank you over 
um, and you get amazing flowjector there. Uh, the rest of the ride is pretty much just a series of little turns um, and little airtime hills. Uh, the second half of the ride, I would say, definitely focuses more on lateral g-forces than vertical g-forces, um, especially in the ending part. Um, although there are some good airtime moments like that one right there. Uh, but yeah, this is like a little ending turnaround, which is very, very slightly banked. Um, and it is a very fun turnaround, um, or I guess helix, you could say. Uh, and it does give you a lot of lateral g-forces. So, getting out of the POV section, I will move into the pros and cons section of the video. Um, first of all, with the pros, I'm not going to be super specific in saying exactly what elements I like, um, because I just did that in the, um, in the POV section of the video. I'm kind of going to be general with oh, I like this kind of aspect of the ride and this kind of aspect of the ride. Um, so yeah, let me get into that. The first pro um, is for sure just all of the airtime, and I'm really singling out that moment after the used to be mid course break run. Um, you get an insane amount of ejector um, and then also floater, uh, floater and flow ejector airtime on that pop. But really, all of the airtime moments on this coaster are great. Um, I didn't really find any airtime hills where I was like, oh, that never gave, that didn't give me any airtime. Um, pretty much all of the elements that were supposed to give you airtime did, um, which is definitely one of the reasons why this coaster is ranked so high. It's just because of all of the airtime moments that it gives you. The next um, little pro uh, that I will give this coaster is definitely all of the lateral uh, g-forces that you get. It is definitely one of the uh, very few coasters that gives you um, an insane sense of, oh my gosh, I'm going to fly out, um, just because it does combine airtime with lateral g-forces, which is very hard to do, but I would say that this coaster does it um, decently well. Um, there is kind of a con that I will get to a little bit later that actually kind of has this aspect in it. Um, but overall, I do definitely like um, that there is some, uh, some lateral g-forces in it, and I think the ending helix is definitely a nice touch um, that is very unique to this coaster. This third pro is actually the last pro that actually has to do with the ride experience itself. Um, although I guess the fourth pro kind of has this ride experience, um, kind of has the ride experience in it a little bit, um, but the final pro does not. Um, but anyways, it's just that the ride is so compact. Um, Nosferi Farm is 100% landlocked. Um, they have, from my knowledge, used pretty much or even maybe exactly 100% of their land. Um, so they really do have to get really creative in where and how they put um, their like rides in in the park. Um, so I think that they did definitely a very good job with fitting Ghost Rider in. Um, it does kind of go over the pathway outside of the park a little bit, which I do think gives a nice touch um, just because as you're walking into the park, you can see the coaster kind of go above you, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, I definitely like that. And um, it is very compact, which means that there are a lot of tight turns, which also adds um, to the last pro, which was kind of the lateral g-forces that you get. Um, and also it adds a lot of airtime moments because um, a good way to like kind of go in one space is just to have a lot of airtime moments and then a turn and then airtime moments and then a turn. Um, so that's, that's kind of the whole gist of this coaster. Um, it's just airtime and turns, and I think that the um, way that they fit the coaster into the space definitely contributes to that. The fourth pro actually is the restraints. I actually talked about this a little bit towards the beginning of the video, um, but I would say that the restraints are definitely a pro in this situation, just because, of course, they could be better. Um, but I do think that they are still very good restraints. They give you enough room um, where you can still get a decent amount of airtime um, and still the general public do feel very safe in these restraints. 
Um, so yeah, it's kind of a win-win for um, both kind of groups of people, I guess. Um, and overall, the, the ride operators didn't really staple you that much. Um, there was like one um, that I noticed actually did staple people. Um, all of the other ride operators did pull up on those trains versus pushing down on it. Um, but yeah, I think that the restraints are definitely a pro. Um, I never felt like um, I never felt angry, um, because of the restraint, uh, uh, the restraints, I was never like, ah, oh, the restraints are so bad, um, although I did have to use kind of a technique where I scooted forward a little bit, um, so that the restraints would, um, just be right here-ish on me, um, and then when we went into an airtime moment, I would scoot back a little, and I would get a lot of airtime, and then in the air, I would kind of scoot forward. It's kind of complicated, um, but it did give me a lot of airtime, so overall, um, the restraints weren't really a problem. And the fifth and final pro is definitely the scenery around this coaster. Like I said, there isn't really much theming actually in the queue line, um, but overall, um, Nosberry Farm is just a beautiful, beautiful park. Um, and the area around Ghost Rider is no different. So this might not have directly to do with Ghost Rider itself, um, but it is close to Ghost Rider, so it kind of kind of okay. Um, but yeah, the area around it is super, super beautiful. Um, and overall, it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a nice area of the park. Now getting into the cons, and trust me, there aren't that many. Um, the first one, and really the main one, is the drop. Um, the drop, I don't think is bad, um, but it could be better. It is not a steep drop um, from any stretch of the imagination. It is definitely a shallower drop, um, which does definitely add to it just not giving that much airtime, no matter if you sit in the front, the middle, or the back. Um, I pretty much rode every single time in the back, and I might have gotten a little bit of a pop um, of airtime in the back row on the drop, but other than that, it was pretty much just um, like a decline to pick up speed. It really was not boring, but it wasn't as good as it could be. And the second, pr or sorry, the second con, um, and I think the final con is, um, is kind of tying in with a pro, um, and that is the lateral G-forces. Um, I do definitely like the lateral G-forces. I think that it is very unique to this coaster that it has them. But I think that it could have focused more on airtime than on lateral G-forces, especially in the back section of, or sorry, the second half of this coaster. Um, it does more focus on the lateral G-forces than the, um, I guess, negative G-forces, which I think that they could improve, um, or not they could improve, but like, I think that that could be the other way around. Um, I personally like um, airtime more than laterals. I know that other people may not, um, but I guess it's just my preference, um, so that's why it's a con. And now getting into the final section of this video, um, just ranking it um, actually in three ways. First, um, what does it rank at the park? Second, um, what does it rank in this category? And third, what does it rank overall? So, um, f it ranks definitely first in the park. Um, I would give it like a 10 out of 10 in the park. Um, it doesn't really compare to anything else that they have in the park. Um, it's super, super fun, super, super awesome, and super unique to the park. Um, and I think that it's definitely a good fit. Next, I'm going to give it another 10. Oh snap, handing out 10s. Um, another 10 in the category. It is my favorite wooden coaster that I have been on. Um, so it definitely does deserve a 10 in this category. Um, it's just super fun, a lot of airtime, pretty much everything good that you could ask um, for in a wooden coaster, uh, Ghost Rider definitely has. And finally, I am also going to give it a 10 um, in 
like just overall. Um, it is my fourth favorite roller coaster that I have been on, um, so it definitely ranks very high for me, and I think that it will stay most likely in the top five, if not the top ten. Um, yeah, probably the top ten as I keep riding more roller coasters over the years. Um, it is an insanely awesome coaster, um, and it definitely deserves a ten. Sure, it could um, be a little bit better, um, but I do think that it still deter uh, deserves a ten. So that is it um, for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the thumbs up button. Also, go check out um, my vlog that I did from Knott's Berry Farm. I will link it right up there in the corner. Um, another thing that you can do is go check out um, just kind of my Knott's Berry Farm playlist. Um, and I will also link that right up there in the corner. Um, that will have all of the other reviews um, from Knott's Berry Farm, the POVs, as well as any future vlogs that I have, as well as the vlog um, that I already uploaded. So that's, that's, yeah, that's that. Go check that out. Um, and then another thing. Wow, so many things. Um, my other thing is my reviews playlist, um, which why I will also leave up there in the corner. Um, I uh, I have already re reviewed Iron Rattler this season, and um, very soon I will come out with Tempesto, um, Intimidator 305, uh, what else, Mr. Freeze, um, as well as... Uh, Superman Krypton Coaster. Those are the four that I will be working on very shortly, um, and I will link that right up there in the corner. That is my reviews playlist, so go check that out. Um, but anyways, like I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Smash the thumbs up button. Comment below um, if you disagreed with anything um, that I said in this video. Definitely um, comment down below, and I will definitely get back to you guys. Um, so anyways, I will see you all next time. Peace out. Peace.